I'm going to read two poems from a book that will be out next year in Icelandic called Ora Torek. It's not an easily translatable title. <clears throat> And I've not translated it. The first one is called A Poem About Visibility. The beaches see nothing. The lakes are blind. The stars are the holes in the sea. When daylight is ever closer by, I see me, see you, seeing me as I wish to be, and I see that it is good. Pretty good on my left profile. Pretty good mirror upon mirror and without glasses through a lo-fi filter. More slender waist and more golden skin, thicker eyebrows and more toned upper arms. Kneading mass. We grimace to cover our faces, undress in order not to be seen, underline our existence hoping to get forgot. Stare down a world that never looks away without acknowledging our existence. I see the eyes blue, as I wish them to be, the eyes brown, as I wish them to be, the eyes colorful and deep like collapsed black holes in nearby galaxies. Just like, just like, just like I want them, like natural wonders, freakish wonders, mad wonders, like Hegelian conversational theory and postmodern discourse modules. Needing mass. You just want your hair down. You just want autonomy. But by the door stands your mother holding hair ties, headbands, and pins. By the door stands the mirror upon the mirror. Beyond the door, the reflection and the eyes of the beholder, each with its own agenda. I see the grass growing in the grounds. I see the mountains, mountain, the ocean, ocean, the fields, field, the world opening and closing as I wish it to, replenished as I wish it to be. I see the mountains ascending from the ocean, they please me. I see the oceans drowning the world for my momentary pleasure, but I will never laugh. Not while I live and breathe will you see me laughing. The ocean sees nothing. And the mountains see nothing. Either they look away or they don't have eyes in their heads, or they don't have a head in their shoulders, but they definitely have shoulders. Shoulders that sink into the ocean, as I wish them to. Nothing above sea level, except the eyes, and we are forced to breathe through our pupils. Needing mass. I see you seeing me as I wish to see me, and I see you as I wish to see me. You see me as others see me. We see nothing without permission, examine nothing except out of the corners of our eyes, out of respect for the world and the things living in it. I see a sailboat sinking into the horizon. I see ducks and drakes skipping off the water, skipping and drowning skipping and ascending. I see aquatic amphipods taking flight when the rocks are lifted and eyes drilling their way down into the black sand. Aquatic amphipods see nothing. The ducks and drakes are blind and the eyes of the sailboats no longer belong to the sailboats. I have a belly that sticks out like a sore thumb. A receding hairline that sticks out like a sore thumb. Sores and stains and spots that stick out like a sore thumb. Bloody nails that stick out like a sore thumb. I have eyelid specula which stick out like a sore thumb. Bursted veins that stick out like a sore thumb. Cataracts that stick out like sore thumbs. But I see me. And that is how I wish for it to be, needing mass. I am easily discernible, cannot hide, stabbing out my eyes. I also hide if I hide. I also take flight if I take flight. 
drag my cap over my eyes down to the knees, stick my fingers in my eyes and put on noise-canceling headphones. I do not exist. I am on my way out where I don't exist either. You see me too and take flight, hiding from me and from you. I am tall as I wish to be, with a piercing beautiful gaze as I wish to be. Everything is as I wish it to be, needing mass. You are delicate and healthy as I wish you to be, and you see me as I am, as I wish to be, not as I will become or could be. I see you being as I wish you to be, see you seeing me as you wish to have me, see me seeing you, seeing me as I we wish to be, become, have been, will become, have become. The mountains ascend from the books, from the pages as I wish them to, celestial blue and lamentable as eternity. The oceans drown the books, everything as I wish it to be, sticking out like sore thumbs for my will alone. So be it blue like an unbridled thought, the beauty beheld in the pupil of the eye, the eye of the beholder as I wish it to be. I see the mountains that created man in their image, the pictures that created man, blind mountains in flight. I'm in the frame, you are in the frame, everyone is in the frame with her cap shielding their face, carrying mountain backs in their frontal rectums, hung over, pretty good, and so forth and so forth. The second one is called a poem about priorities. The day the machines take over, the day that the philosophical, philosophical paradoxes become incarnate, the day that the contradictions of capitalism destroy the system, the day that the computers gain personality, will, self-image. The day that the personalities will gain self-image. The greatest plight of our times, the so-called modern times, is the democratic deficit. Nothing is as urgent as the lack of water in the third world, the eradication of malaria, cancer, and sexual violence. Weapons export to dictatorships must be stopped and the war against terrorism must cease. Drugs are the lesser evil and the worst. Worse than corruption, which otherwise is worst except when the refugee crisis is the worst. Then it is the lesser evil. Almost a billion people are living in hunger and any one of them could at any time get leukemia from the power lines. If the economy crumbles, everything else will immediately suffer the consequences. In a collapse, the asylum seekers will multiply. The hunger will become worse and hungry people are more likely to get violent. Poor people rape. We are depleting the Earth's resources at such a rate that soon no one will be left to worry about the nuclear weapons or the sexual violence. Faith. We must stop the faith. Hope. Religion. We must stop the civil confirmations, the civil cream pies, the civil cash offerings. The false prophets must be stopped like the diplomats and the power lines must be installed somewhere else. For thousands of years we have endured the tyranny of superstition. We are not multiplying fast enough. We are multiplying too fast. We need more taxpayers, less tax takers. Victory will not be won if it is not first won in the discourse. Unless we first get a grip on the concept and the debate becomes ethical, presentable. This comes first. Our opinions are currency, our opinions are leg irons, our opinions are files and skeleton keys. The morality must be set free. Porn is at the source of it. That is where the delusions and anger are coming from. We must stop being so horny all the time. Plastic is at the source of it. It does not erode. Plastic is eternity laminated. Nothing infects as quickly as prejudice. 
Science will, will eventually cost us everything. We have no time to lose. Mistrust will eventually cost us everything. Hunger is the most distressing difficulty the world is facing. Disease, nuclear weapons, and drones make no difference where hunger is concerned. Drones will soon be as passé as napalm and landmines, and we will still be hungry. We will still not have access to clean water, and the glaciers of the world will still be melting. And women will still be fed roofies at parties on the west side. Children will still be fed molly at parties on the west side. Muscle men on steroids will still be fed body disorders at parties on the west side. The west side is the hidden tragedy of our times. Suicides are the hidden tragedy of our times. Eating disorders are the hidden tragedy of our times. The Asylum Seeker Circus is the hidden tragedy of our times. It comes first. Dying from time. It is better to die from the present than from the now. Worse to die from time than lack of time. Yet nothing is as urgent as the refugee crisis. The genocides of Rwanda, Turkey, Palestine, the genocides are the worst. Nothing is worse than the Holocaust. Sexual violence is more urgent than the Holocaust, more urgent than AIDS, more urgent than hunger. Overfishing will make the world uninhabitable. Earthquakes. A single star will fall in the wrong place and all our plans are for nothing. The Earth is a ticking time bomb. People who do not vaccinate their children up against the wall and just boom. They deserve no better. People who do not wash their hands and infect other people with salmonella, we should shoot them first. People who see other people as tools, as ways of reaching a goal rather than goals in themselves, such people should be injected with AIDS in the eyeball. The Holocaust, did I mention that? Malaria is a little better than sexual violence, but worse than assholes in suit, suits. Sexual violence is a little better than child molestation, but worse than what's on radio. Child molestation is a little better than mass murder. Mass murder is a little better than genocides. The genocides must be stopped. That comes first, absolutely, but the mass murders must also be stopped. One does not preclude the other. And then the infertility must be stopped. But that can come later. We must sound off our trumpets of war with bellows, castrate the rapists with pliers, disassemble the nuclear weapons with pliers and prioritize correctly, otherwise we will never succeed. We must discuss our crises on the right platform, hello safe space, and react immediately and with a pitiless brutality of compassion, solidarity. Otherwise, we risk exacerbating the situation. The locution creates the world. We must tackle the locution. Put a break on this vicious circle. The vicious circle is worse than Ebola. The greatest threat of our time is the revolution, the public the people. The greatest threat of our time is the police, the army, the state. The greatest threat of our time is the building contractors mafia. They come first. The greatest threat of our time is the floods, the volcanoes and the holocaust. The Pacific trash vortex. Disposable diapers will make the world uninhabitable. Genocides will make the world uninhabitable. Unrestrained foresting. All these plane trips. Species will become extinct one after the other and finally there will be nothing left but the single little farm cod somewhere close to Trondheim, Norway. It will be her responsibility to maintain life on Earth. Her responsibility to stop global warming and protect freedom of expression. If she does not subscribe to Yulans Posten, no one will. 
This Khan will be the protector of culture. This Khan will be the protector of language. This Khan will be the protector of science. First, we eliminate the sexual violence, and then we eliminate racism, and then we can go extinct. First, we eliminate the nuclear weapons, and then we eliminate the aluminum plants, and then we can go extinct. First, we eliminate the patriarchy, and then we eliminate the market economy, and then we can go extinct. First, we eliminate pornification, and then we eliminate the gender wage gap, and then we can go extinct. First, we eliminate the sadism, and then we eliminate the victim complex, and then we can go extinct. First, we eliminate poverty, and then we eliminate public firearms, and then we can go extinct. First, we eliminate the lack of tolerance, and then we eliminate ignorance, and then we can go extinct. First, we eliminate the naivety, and then we eliminate the borders, and then we can go extinct. And then we can go extinct. That comes first. And then we can go extinct and so forth and so forth, and then we can go extinct. Thank you.